Monster truck show jokes aside, there's a serious reason three guys who had never seen a grain bin before are building this robot. Farmers often store grain in these bins after harvest before it's sold. Sometimes a farmer goes inside to make grain flow easier and break up clumps. Right now there's not really any solutions other than a farmer with a shovel if there are problems inside of a bin. That can be deadly. If grain collapses or a crust breaks, or an auger is turned on accidentally while someone is inside. Suffocation happens in seconds. These accidents kill about 20 U.S. farm workers yearly. This is a safety mission. Keeping farmers out of the bin will keep them safe. Yeah. No. no. Chad, with his son Ben, no. and Ben's best friend Zane, turned an interest in robotics into a tech startup, prompted by a farmer friend's suggestion. When he told you about the problem you're trying to solve, did the idea of using a robot to solve it just click right away? Well, I always knew we were going to use a robot, um, but we had no idea what it would look like. So we actually built what we call a scurry bot. It's a little 18 by 20 inch robot with augers, and it scurries across the surface of the grain. That's where the name grain weevil came from. So why do you call it a weevil? So inside of these grain bins, you know, sometimes if, if you let grain out to spoil or if you don't take good care of it, there's these little, little bugs called grain weevils that crawl on it. The grain weevil team thinks farmers will like the robot more than the bug. It does. It scurries across the top of the surface, and the engagement of our augers not only moves the robot, but it manipulates the grain. We're using gravity to manipulate the grain and, and do different tasks inside of the grain bin. So we're increasing what's the scientific word is the sediment gravity flow. Introduce a little more air to the process and it flows um, down into a level state, which is an important process of managing a grain bin. Imagine creating an avalanche. Yeah, yeah, controlled, right? The guys were spending long days testing and working out the bugs <laughs> when we caught up with them. trying different prototypes, oh, there we go. and monitoring the results. So tell me what you're seeing there. So this is all of our positional data from the robot. So I get acceleration, angular velocity, orientation, all of our temperature data, voltage, current, everything that we need to make sure that the robot's running correctly. Because it's not easy to get a robot to run on piles of grain. It took us over a year to even get a robot to drive on the grain. Quattro, your favorite then? Absolutely. Quattro gonna win? Be the oh, one yeah. on the I market? I mean, he's winning so far, so if he just keeps on his trajectory, he's gonna be, he's gonna be the best robot out of him. Quattro, Quattro, Quattro! <laughs> what happened to Quattro? Well, he got a little uh, cross signal or mixed signal or something, flew all the way backwards and shredded up his augers, so. This has got to hurt to see the death of Quattro. <laughs> <laughs> it's devastating. He'll be truly. back. Yeah, He'll be back. Zane, Zane kind of latched onto this, but you know, all of our robots are doing everything that we wanted to do, and Quattro was our favorite, but not anymore. No. Nah. We always like to break things, because then we know how to fix it to make it better. What started as an idea for an educator and still in school Nebraska oh, engineering man, students is close to reality. Armed with funding, including a prestigious MIT student prize, they're now running on-farm trials in Nebraska, Iowa, and Tennessee. The hope is it'll eventually be something farmers can just keep in a bin, operating on its own. What do you hope eventually happens with this, this product and this company? Truly, I hope that one day, farmers don't ever get into a grain bin again. 